Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well, and today we are back with an unboxing as well as a review of this year's special edition Lagavulin 11 that has been done within collaboration uh, of the Lagavulin partner and hype man and spokesperson, that is Nick Offerman, who played, uh, he played Mitch Manley? Duke, Duke American? Man, what was his name? Ah, yeah, 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 Ron Swanson in Parks and Rec. It's been a while since I've seen it. Now this new double charred Lagavulin aims to cater to folks, including myself, who love both burnt toast as well as smoky whiskey and that briny Lagavulin goodness. So I am super duper excited for this one and I hope you all are too. Now real quick before we get to this review, if you do like these videos uh, of the wanders and the reviews and the hauls and all the other great stuff we got cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, that way you can get notified when our newest videos get put up. So thanks again and let's get down to it. All right, so we have our box and it is Fragile. So maybe it's from Italy, perhaps. Um, but I did end up ordering this from the East Coast because for whatever reason, here in California, we never seem to get some of the best whiskeys until the last time it comes out. We seem to be the last people to get it. So I don't know if it has to do with geography or if it's an elaborate conspiracy against people on the west coast which you know maybe is probably justified not sure but we always seem to get it last so i had to reach out to our folks on the east coast and see if they would send me this so let's get into the box today i have ye old simple box cutter or i guess it's a exacto knife uh, to get this bad boy open and a little bit of a drum roll let's get it open so i will make the first incision here And ta-da! Oh, you can all see that. It's a beautiful box with beautiful boxes inside of it. Whatever this is, we have the actual box, and that looks quite nice. Huh? I mean, if you take a look at that, we got two of them. And ba -ba! we got two, count them dose. One, two, the Lagavulin 11 Nick Offerman Special. All right, so let's take some of these bad boys out and see what the taste is and what all the hype is about. Because, again, I'm really excited to have had these and uh, they look pretty good. So I'm hoping that it's going to be a great addition to my Lagavulin collection. All right, so now that we got that excitement out of the way, let's get this thing open and let's get our first impressions on this Nick Offerman Lagavulin 11, the Charred Oak Edition. Make sure you get it uh, evenly distributed, both sides. <laughs> oh, the foil always comes off real smooth on these lagging ones. I love that. Oh, get a pop. Oh, a good one. One for me, and one for you Let's set that down let's take a look at that that is some good looking whiskey and I know I say that every single time but it really is this time it's got a nice kind of clear I don't even want to call it like a hay if you all can see that oh I can smell the I can smell the smoke from here <laughs> it's gonna be great oh wow Oh man, that is a spectacular. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the whiskey and its price while that continues to open up. Oh man. Now this bottle specifically, I got it at an undisclosed location out of state because, you know, here in California, we never seem to get the good stuff first. I got it for $69.99, not including shipping and handling. So there's some additional costs that came with that as well. The ABV on this one is at, uh, it's at 46% ABV. And I think that's actually lower than what the normal Lagavulin is. So if take the normal Lagavulin, which I almost always have on hand somewhere. Uh, let's see, the normal Lagavulin is at uh, 43 proof, 43%. Uh, ABV so it is a little bit higher. You know what? Let's set that aside. We might still do a little comparison with that um, This one is obviously again another single malt from Isla and it really is doubling up on a lot of what makes Lagavulin great So that's what I'm pretty excited about um, it is a 750 milliliters. So it is not one of those uh, 
those tiny 700 milliliters. And I always feel jilted whenever I get those in stupid international economic policies. And again, the key reason I bought this one is not because of the Offerman-ness on it. Uh, you know, I think that adds something to it. But because, um, you know, I think that charred double burnt barrel is really just going to add more of what makes Lagavulin, so like the smoky, smoky and peatiness and brightness, it's going to add up and make more of that and make it, you know, a more Lagavulin-y Lagavulin. Also, um, because this is a bit long, younger, uh, you know, the normal Lagavulin is 16, this one is at 11. Uh, I think that it might be really interesting to see the interplay between how a, a younger whiskey and the burnt barrelness interplay and make, uh, you know, this yearly limited release uh, really something unique that uh, you may not be able to get at some point in the future. All right, so let's do a little bit of uh, little notes on this, and I'll be back here in two and a half seconds. All right, so the initial impressions that I'm getting on this one... Man, it is very, very smoke forward. I guess that's exactly what you would anticipate. Um... As you kind of experience it more, it really levels off into a myriad of pretty amazing, amazing flavors. Uh, it is smoke intense, sure. And <laughs> if I leave the room, and the wife just came in, she's like, it smells like a campfire in here. So if you leave the room and you come back in, uh, you can smell right at the doorway that uh, someone smells like someone emptied out their hibachi in your, in your, in your room. So, uh, of course, that's exactly what I would expect from a double charred barrel <laughs> whiskey. Uh, it also, I mean, just look at this thing. It looks like, <laughs> it looks like it's been on fire. So, I mean, that's the whole, uh, the whole ambiance around it, the whole marketing around it definitely sets you up for this strong smoke. So it doesn't come as a complete surprise. It's not like it jumped out from behind uh, a bush at you. But the smoke, it does seem to move pretty quickly to the back, right on the nose. Uh, and you start to get other, mm, you get, start to get like other sweetnesses, almost like a, like a, I guess you would call it like a floral bouquet. Oh man, and some like really like unriped green grapes, uh, or specifically those Moscato Japanese ones. I don't know if you've all had those, but they are delicious, but not fully ripe yet. It's still got like a greenness to it in the sense of ripeness. Oh. And then as far as like the flowers go, I would say that it'd be a mixture of like lilies and roses, both put together with like a consistent sweetness that goes to it. You know, those lilies, sometimes they have like a, almost like a sickly sweetness to them if you catch them at the right time. Oh yeah. And then you definitely still get that traditional Lagavulin-y and the and, and the brininess, but it's not as prominent uh, as in the 16. And it just seems more like a stronger hint of hay, maybe like summer hay. So it's like that more like warm musky hay. Uh, Play-Doh and a definite, a definite complexity yeah a definite complexity with uh the different flavors on there so um you know it really makes it hard to pin down what the flavor is but they are all kind of acting in concert together you just get like flashes of each of the flavors in their own turn so it's pretty amazing all right so now let's try this one out on the palate and see how it does in comparison to the nose hmm oh Oh, wow. That's very interesting. All right, let me write this down. Back. Two and a half seconds. All right, so first things first on this, um, of course, is the smoke. I mean, <laughs> the smoke is definitely there, and uh, it is exactly where I've always wanted it. Uh, you know, I've always thought a lot of the smoky whiskey we get to don't have enough smoke and try to it. This is exactly on point. It's the exact amount of smoke that I was promised, and it's the exact amount of smoke that I have been hoping for. It's the smoke we've all been hoping for. <laughs> so it's not too much, but it is definitely enough. Now, there is a bit of a slight burn to it, uh, which is good, right? I think that's, you want to know that you're drinking alcohol, right? Um, and I also get like a, mm, like a, I guess it's like a, like a dry leaves and the salt really just brings out that uh, that great flavor that makes Lagavulin amazing. I mean, wow. It's like a, like a meaty, smoked green olive. Super like savory and salty. Oh man, that's that's really interesting. <laughs> now the actual texture on the whiskey, it is it is pretty light. I mean, you can see here, you don't see, it's not super viscous, right? You can, you can see that it, the texture on it is pretty light. It's what you would expect. Um, it is a bit oily and, uh, you know, it's not a viscosity monster. 
um, really by any stretch of the imagination. Hmm. Now, the most amazing thing about this is that the flavors and the ABV and the smoke, they're all working together like a like a jazz quartet. You know, someone's playing the piano, someone's playing the trumpet, someone's playing the trombone, I guess. I don't know. But each of them were taking turns um, and, you know, they're not trying to overpower each other. Uh, they all sound great together, but nobody is trying to take over and do a single solo for the entirety of the song. It's like all the flavors are taking turns and nobody's egocentric in trying to dominate the song. It is just so well balanced and with, a, of course, a heavy smoky bias, but it's super well balanced. Oh, 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 and you know what? There's like a like a, like a burnt sweetness, like marshmallows that have been burnt flavored uh, that really sneaks in there at the last second. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> Now, the complexity here is really interesting because of the fact that it's super duper approachable. It's like when Michio Kaku explains, you know, quantum physics, right? Or string theory. And you're like, oh yeah, I get that. I totally understand that. But really, the concepts and the nuances are basically lost to you. They'll, they'll never be there, but you kind of get an idea of what he means by it. So, um, you know, it may never come around as far as understanding the full complexity of this, but it's just so much to explore with it that each time I take a new sip, you know, it's like a, a different angle to really look at what this whiskey is, to, to explore the flavor. So that is that is really great, and it's just so well balanced. Hmm. All right, now for the finish. And again, this is where the real ratings come out for me, because I love a great finish. And the finish on this doesn't disappoint. It's long, it's lingering, and the best part about it, and probably the most difficult, and ultimately probably the most expensive part of creating a whiskey like this, is the flavor that each sip is not, you know, is not a story where there's not like a beginning, a middle, and end, where you start in one place and you go down to another and then you it tapers off or anything like that, but rather you basically have the same story flat all the way on and then it just kind of slowly disappears. Like you're listening to a jazz quartet again, like the people playing the jazz, but you're like walking away from them. And the flavor just holds the complexity and the balance all the way to that very end. It doesn't decompose. It doesn't fall apart or shift gears uh, to to make like a happy ending or like a, a, a an easy a sudden stop kind of ending. Rather, it's just you know it's a well balanced finish that just tapers off. All right. So for the pros and cons on this one, I mean this is gonna be rough, right? Like what are the pros and cons? Something that is really so enjoyable. Actually, you know what? Let me try out, uh, let me try some of this normal Lagoon next to it. Normal Lagoon, the 16. The flagship, if you will, of the line. Let's get a comparison here, just real quick. We might do a full video on it, but just just for my own gratification. Cheers, everybody. Mmm. Wow. Definitely more subdued than this double shard. It's like this is the dad and then this is the punk kid who's, you know, who says stupid stuff in conversation. So you can definitely see that they're related. You can you can definitely taste the flavor relation between each other, the family resemblance, but uh, you know, this one is a little bit more dumb and arrogant. All right, so let's talk about pros and cons. And really these are gonna come off to me more nitpickiness than actual problems with the whiskey. Um, because, you know, I, I think that this whiskey is, is pretty good. So far, the best. It's going to be not the number one out of the three whiskeys that we've tried so far. Um, but the first thing is that the floralness that comes out on the nose, um, it doesn't really follow through on the palate. So when you drink it and you get that woof of, 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 of effervescence that hits your nose, what you're smelling is very different from what you're tasting, which is, again, not bad, but it just, it, you know, it just kind of, makes the process a little wonky, right? It seems uh, incongruent. Again, not bad, just it's, it's it's you know, you're you're rubbing your belly and patting your head at the same time. There, there are two different things that are happening at the same time. Now, the next thing is that probably getting that floral scent is a, a major feat to do when you're making whiskey, right? Getting whiskey to smell like flowers, <laughs> lilies and, and roses, that's probably pretty tough to do. And every time I smell it though, it really reminds me of grandma's soap, you know? Just has an antique floral soapiness to it, um, which again is not at all, you know, unpleasant necessarily, but it's just a little off-putting. It's not what I would expect out of a burnt barrel whiskey. Now the pros, <laughs> I mean, you can just play back everything we just did and everything we just talked about on the nose and on the palate and on the finish, and uh, you'll you can get a good idea of what the pros are. But in short, the nose is great. It really just gets your palate ready for what is to come overall. 
The palate is a masterpiece of interplay between the flavors and the lightness and all the flavors and, and ABVness and all that put together um, and, and culminating together to make a greater flavor than they would have been on each of their own individual bases. So, you know, the, 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 the total sum is much better than the individual parts in this case. And the finish, which, I mean, so many whiskeys fall short on. This is my favorite part. The finish on this is just is just amazing for me. I just, hmm. I can just not rave enough about it. I love how it stays together till the very end. There's no ending to it, no happy ending, no ta-da, you know, they rode off into the sunset to happily ever after. It's just music that uh, you're, you're just getting farther and farther away from, but they're continuing to play until you just can't hear it anymore. So that, I don't know how they did that, but that, it's something that I have not gotten a lot with a lot of whiskeys. All right, so let's do the final score uh, for me. And so I uh, remember all the whiskeys get a perfect score starting out, right? Uh, all the whiskeys uh, start with a perfect score and they lose points throughout the process. So on the nose for this Lagavulin 11, um, there's a total of six points that they could get. I took off one point just because of that off-putting floral thing that is, again, just me. It's probably just me. It's not a jab against the whiskey. Um, it's me. It's not you, okay, Lagavulin. Um, it's just a personal thing. So, um, you know, I, I took off one point just because it still always just kind of takes me out of it a little bit. So that means that it gets a totality of five points on the nose. Now on the palette, there's a total of 15 points, so 10, five, <laughs> that I took off. Uh, I took off one point uh, for the lightness in the body um, because although, uh, although a thicker viscosity would probably ruin the balance, I get that. I personally am preferential to thicker bodies <laughs> of, <laughs> of whiskey. I'm talking about whiskey. And also uh, one point for the inconsistency between the nose and the palate if I had to find something else, which is sort of confusing. You know, you get the nose and then you get the palate and they're they're not simpatico necessarily. Um, and then uh, I took off one other point for, <laughs> I took off one other point for only coming out once a year and probably not coming out in the future. Like last year was the Guinness one. Next year, we don't know what they're gonna do. Um, so that means that if you do like this one, then uh, you're gonna need to buy, um, you're gonna need to buy more than one because once it's gone, it's gone. In fact, I probably need to buy one more too. So, um, so that comes out to 12 points in total for the body. All right, and last is the finish, which is to me, I mean, look, I'm a sucker for a good finish. I gave it a totality of nine points. So I took off zero points from it. Mm. Because the finish is exactly what I've been looking for. Uh, it's long, it's lingering, and is a slow slope into oblivion uh, to the point where you are not really sure if you are still tasting it or not. And the best thing about it is all those flavors, they hold together in a tight, well-practiced set, which, you know, just is is amazing. So I took zero points off for it, so nine points, and, uh, I, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's, I can't say anything else better about the finish. Now, of course, you would be a fool to just take my word from it, uh, but, you know, in addition to my points, let's see what the wife has to say. Let her drop some wisdom uh, that she has better applied to life and in this case, even to whiskey than I do. Let's see what she thinks here. Yeah, the wife is excited about this one. Wait, 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 wait. Let me cheers too. Just a little bit, little, little sums on there. That's right. All right, folks, so you heard it. Negative 1.5 from the wife, uh, 0.5 from the palate, and then one from what was the one from the finish, which uh, I can't say I agree with, but you know what? She's right. <laughs> Let's just say she's right. So uh, when we add up the total review scores overall, that comes out to 24.5 points or 81% score. That means that the lag of Valina 11 uh, with this raw score will go at the very top of the whiskeys uh, on our top position list. So uh, it's going to go in front of the smoke wagon and above the high west. Now, <laughs> how good that is, I don't know. We only have three reviews so far, but uh, I think definitely for sure this is the best one we have had. Now for the value. Uh, so the high and the low medium prices on this. So the prices on the lag of 11 are really all over the place, but from the most reasonable, we're looking at the bell curve, just kind of take the, the high and the low in the middle. 
Um, the, the high I saw was $109.99 uh, for this one. Uh, the mid level is at $89.99. And on the low side, which is what we also got it for at $69.99. So that brings the average shelf price uh, to $89.99. So if we take that review percentage of 81% that we just gave it and apply that to the average shelf price, we get a value price of $72.89 uh, in dollars. Because, you know, America. So by my calculation, uh, it turns out that I actually underpaid $2.90 for this bottle or 3.9%, which needs, I means I need to buy more of it. Yeah, needs time to buy some more. All right, so overall, in conclusion, henceforth, furthermore, <laughs> I'm pretty stoked to have this whiskey in the collection. Look, I know, I know I'm a bit of a lack of own sick event. I'll admit that. Guilty, right? But uh, having this will definitely provide me with a bit more smoke and a bit more char than the standard Laga uh, usually covers. Of course, there's no way this will be an everyday drinker because one, there's no telling when it'll come back out. And two is I have no idea when we're ever gonna get it on the West Coast, so I don't want to pay shipping and handling for it. And then three, uh, it's only a yearly thing. I know last year they did a Guinness Barrel, this year they got the double char. So who knows what they come out with uh, in the future? So I'm just gonna have to <laughs> I'm just gonna have to squirrel some of this away uh, until you know something similar comes out and uh, see if I can pick up a couple more bottles once it hits the West Coast. But yeah, I am definitely blown away by its complexity. I'm blown away by its stability, its smokiness, and all the great things that I got with this bottle. So I would definitely recommend this bottle to somebody who already knows they enjoy Isla whiskey. So whether it's uh, you know a Lagavulin or a Lafroy or um, you know any of those kinds of ones and you're looking for something a little bit more a little bit of an offshoot from the brand and uh, you know that's and you can find it this is definitely something I would I would definitely recommend so you know great job to Lagavulin great job to Nick Offerman uh, who can act uh, he can build stuff with wood like canoes and you know what ultimately he makes a damn fine whiskey so great job on that bravo all right, so that's it for today's number three uh, tasting, Numero Trace. And I hope that you enjoyed this review, and if you do, uh, if you like the wanders, if you like the reviews, you like the hauls, and all the other great stuff we got coming up in store for you all, please don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get notified when our newest videos come out uh, every Sunday and also in between when we find some interesting stuff that comes up in between, but definitely on Sunday. Now, just in case you forget, if you do see a whiskey that you love, just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will, and it might even be me. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your week, and adios, I'm out.